Hi, how's it? It's Gabo. And please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings that we might all be on the same page here. In the previous part, briefly, I was saying, I was talking about um, the, the testing a hypothesis, how you create a theory is by creating, coming up with a hypothesis and then testing it, right? Then you've got a theory that you can teach since you've observed data over a, a set period of time that is reliable. And so therefore you're in a position to make your particular theory worth the while for people to embrace as proven, do you understand? And I, I spoke about how when it comes to the, um, the wall between men and women in the black community, I believe I have proven that the issue, the root cause here are the men. Um, and that is because in this particular study, I am a constant. You know, I was just any other typical black woman prior to redemption. But then I got born again and basically desired to give black men everything they've ever wanted. Do you understand? You know, like to take things to back in the day, the glorious good old fashioned days. Um, that's what they would call it. The level of submission that dwelt in that time where moms were at home, like, you know, cooking, cleaning, pregnant in the kitchen, taking care of kids, submissive, barely saying anything to husbands or dads, um, never ever arguing, never ever disagreeing, but just kind of being like wives. And that's all that they did. I was prepared uh, to be that thing. And despite me being what it is that that thing was, I nonetheless still continue to get abused by, by black men and quite a few of them who all just wanted to control me, which is not what the Lord intended between men and women. I wanted to submit, but my version of biblical submission, they were not content with. Theirs was diabolical. It was nefarious. It was not of God because it wanted to control a woman until she would dishonor God and idolize a man, put him at that pedestal. Uh, this then move into the next environment or next space of this particular discussion because it's going to key or tie in to this whole argument that I've been having over the past couple of days, right? Uh, let's talk about black women and how they've been all along. I'm, I'm 38, right? I'm turning 39 this year. I was born in 1984. I was born in 1984 and I've, I've been watching black women be black pretty much since then. Well, ever since I could gauge it. So let's say maybe three or four years of age. But let's rather just speak about when I entered into my teenage years, right? Because that's when dating started to happen type establishment thing for me. Guys, black girls by far far even above i went to a co to to a mixed race school very tail end of a party team so therefore black ki kids could now go to white schools and whatnot so i went to a mixed school where there were all different kinds of races mixed schools where there were all different kinds of races okay so i got to observe how white girls are in relationships with boyfriends i got to observe uh indian girls colored girls etc in relationships so i more or less am able to pretty much say this is the general personality that the women in relationships in different races have been on along okay now black girls which is what i was always want like i am a black girl and the stories that were being shared among one another were inside my black circle type establishment thing we tend we were very very we were segregated quite a lot still even though we were still we were in mixed schools we still were segregated today it's better the kids are mixing with each other where you can have a crew of girlfriends that have got all different kinds of races in them but back in the day if you were a black girl you tended to have black friends and that was it um and that's how it is that i grew up so my stories the many of them that i have are within that context I'm disquieted by the delay that's coming through. I think it's better when I move the camera this way. Anyway, whatever. Cool beans. Um, bananas. Black girls. This is what I have observed. Black girls. Black girls in particular. And I will come to white girls now now. Um, okay? Black girls, since I was a teenager, guys. Since I was a teenager, Wankutra, have always had this, like, ride or die to a point of being um fuzzy, hence why we even innovated the terminology fat and set. Fat and set is basically when a woman agrees to live with a man without being married to him, apart from marriage, and she caters to him all the needs that this man, that, that, a, that a wife would give him. So she washes his laundry, she irons his laundry, she cooks for him, she cleans, she does everything for this dude, like absolutely everything much like a wife would, but all this is being done by somebody that also has her own job. So it's unlike back in the day where women were not necessarily working. And so when a man came home, there was like this prepared dinner 
And I'm speaking about women who were so young, so young, that you would imagine they wouldn't have that level of domesticatedness in them because they're still yuppies. They're still kind of irresponsible brats. Instead, I have seen women be better caterers to the needs of boyfriends than they were at home with their parents. Like a chick that would give her mom grief, not wash the dishes all day long until she comes home. I have seen such a woman as that make sure when she's staying at, over at her boyfriend's apartment for the weekend, wash the dishes from the moment she wakes up in the morning until gulalwa. They could have pizza and on the plates that they had pizza, the place that they used to eat the pizza, she would wash them straight away so that this guy could think of her as marriage material. I have seen black girls act like wives in a way that I've never seen them in that domesticated capacity amidst each other chick could have her own apartment and in her apartment she would sleep overnight with the dishes in the sink but the moment she goes and spends time at her boyfriend's that stuff will never happen you will find this chick at a braai where her boyfriend is hosting being the one to make the pop and the flace and the lettuce and the tomatoes chopping them up a storm and oh chopping them up, up a storm and all that jazz all right yeah, um, but when she invites you over as girls to her apartment to hang, y'all be ordering pizza and that's it because she's not trying to cook for you. She's not trying to cook for her girls, but this chick will cook for her man's friends. Like she's a wife. She will be cooking for her boyfriend's boys who come and visit him for two hours like she is his wife. But she will, in her own apartment, invite her girls over for drinks. And she will not even get on the stove to make pop. She, you, they will literally call her. Girl, give me 50 bucks, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. Two of us, yeah, next thing calling Debonair's deliver. But for her man, she will cook. So ignoring her own dishes in her own house, ignoring her own pofu in her own pantry that she bought and it's been sitting there for three months because she's not about that cooking business, doesn't want to mess with her manicure, but her, her boyfriend's pantry is groceries and her boyfriend's fridge's groceries will get depleted on the weekend when she's spending it at his apartment. I've seen this happening and I'm not even speaking independent lifestyle way yeah, only where this chick now has her own place and is doing things differently in her own apartment than when with her boyfriend, but also teenagers. Like, I'm speaking a 17, 18 year old girl making pop at a 22, 23 year old's boyfriend's apartment or during a braai where she's the girlfriend <laughs> and this guy has a braai at his own parents' house. She will be in the kitchen peeling tomatoes and carrots and whatnot at this guy's mom's house because the guy's mom's family, like their family, has umsebenzi. There's like a. Um, a little more get there, get together, like a whole traditional event, okay? So like some, let's say a party. Let's call it a party in English because I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, let's say the family of this guy where he stays with his mom. There's like a whole family event. This chick at the age of 18 will go there and peel potatoes and, pan and bananas. Okay, maybe not bananas, but like tomatoes, chop them up, carrots and everything like she's a wife. Because she is trying to impress his family and him to be a wife. So she's lazy at home. Her own dad cannot stand how she keeps leaving her shoes on the floor in the passage. But she will not cater to her dad the way that she caters to a boyfriend that may or may not marry her. So black men, you are the problem. Because women, girlfriends, as young as 18, as young as 17, 16, are so wifely, even in this era of independent women. And top of that, I'm on TikTok 24 hours a day. I'm a Gen Z. Even in this era, even as young as that, even as irresponsible as that, they still nonetheless want to ha walk in a very archaic, that's what they call it, right? Like old school model of womanhood. Especially because in Africa, it is still so appreciated among black people, like raw old school womanhood is still so longed after by men. It is still so heralded and praised by men that women, even if they are growing up in the 21st century of I'm an independent woman and I've got everything, I've got my own apartment, I'm not gonna, you know, the shoes on my feet, I bought it, you ain't never gonna hear a woman in Africa sing that and actually mean it. She will sing it only because she likes Beyonce and Destiny's Child, but she will not like say it to her men in her face because she does not want to be rejected. She does not want to be rejected. It is a cultural norm in Africa for kids, girl children, to treat boyfriends and uh, like just boyfriends. 
forget about husbands but husbands too however like kings like kings do you understand it is an african ideal it's a custom it's a norm it is revered to be a domestic goddess when you are a woman in africa as a black african in particular so the chomita my friends learned how to make pop in boyfriend's apartments before they learned how to make pop in their mama's kitchens that is a fact do you understand anybody that is a black woman growing up in south africa would be lying to themselves if they came up in my grill and said carabo you're speaking nonsense i don't know what you're talking about so that's the first thing black african women i will speak for south africa in particular because that's where i'm at are little domestic goddesses in the presence of potential mates in a way that they aren't even with their parents don't nobody even know who taught this girl how to soccer Papa, ya, se tu, ding. <laughs> no, like her mom tried to get her to do it. And she was like, I ma, sorry. And went to the back of her house and smoked a cigarette. But at this guy's parents' house, she suddenly knows how to like cook pop in a tripod. <laughs> Wearing a dog and like a scarf around her in flip-flops. Because who in the world wants to be wearing ikwaikwai in front of a dad of this guy? I'm going to be a future Makodi, so they are going to understand me as a traditional wife. There was this one woman, back in the day she was my ex-boyfriend's cousin's girlfriend. Yanaya, she was a fatanset. Fatanset means cohabiting with a boyfriend, okay? Living in the... Koko, this dude was still living at his mother's house, right? Uh, in a back room. No, his grandmother's house in the back room. And this chick was prepared. To live with this guy, go big room, and be the basic domestic servant of the main house as a girlfriend. And on top of that, it wasn't an apartment. So black women in Africa are so desirous of love and affection that they don't even care if a guy has money or not. The Slay Queen movement with Kanyimbao understand they are the exception of Kanyimbao in Africa, not the norm. You you see them on TV, so they proliferated. That's what I'm, I'm getting at. And it appears as if though it's like that all over the show in increasing measure. But African women generally are prepared to take a man in any shape, color, form, size that they come. No man Even if he doesn't have money, do you understand? Even if he doesn't have a strong career, a strong job, as long as he is prepared at some point where it looks as if he might marry you, that's how much they want marriage. They're good. So they will live in the back of a shack no in the back in, in a back room with a grown man about to turn 40 that has therefore displayed that he's not about to become wealthy any minute now they will pre be prepared to be a fat and set of a man like that just in so far as they can one day in the future guarantee marriage that is a black african woman for you so these men in africa who claim that women are disrespectful <sighs> guys these men who claim that women don't want to submit they don't want to cook they don't want to these ladies these girls these 17 18 19 21 year old girls don't even cook in their own grandmother's houses they don't cook in their own mama's houses they don't sweep in their own mother's houses they don't make pop they have to be cajoled and pulled by the ear by their parents to contribute in cooking for christmas lunch in their own families but they will like i said cook over at a burning tripod good boyfriending Go matung a di 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 future fiance and whatnot because all they want to do is get married. Marriage is still a longed after prospect by African women in a way that is not happening in the West. So I want you to understand that when I say the problem is men, it's men, it's men. Me too. Me oh, me I go tell you about myself. Eh? Let me not go and accuse female anymore. Let me not go and accuse female in my periphery. Let's go and give you story about Garabo. Give you story about Garabo. Garabo. Eh, before Jesus saved me, guys, before the Lord Jesus Christ saved me, I was lazy, like you won't understand. My mother can come here and testify and say, La, all right, I don't like Arabo's ministry, but I'm all right. Mama Meling, Nike Twafa. I was lazy, like you won't understand, you guys. I hated cooking. I still do to this day. I love baking, though. It's weird. I don't know how that even works, but like, I hated cooking, okay? Yeah, baking only happened when I came to Christ. So my mom, ever since I was a kid, like teenage years, tried to get me by those pots. You know what I'm saying? Like what? It's Sunday, Garabo. It's Sunday, Garabo. Help me peel them potatoes. And I would like pretend I'm sleeping. Like she would say, please help me with the potatoes. And I'd be like, I keep quiet, right? And then I would just like slip into the background. Next thing when my mom is looking for me, I'm in my bed. I wasn't even sleeping. I was just acting like I was asleep. And for the better part of the time, my mom would leave me alone. She would leave me alone. 
very well here in Alaska Caraba growing up, okay? I turn 22, I meet this guy, we start dating. My ex-boyfriend, the one near five years. My ex-boyfriend, during the time when we were together, I do not know how many times I cooked. Yes, you guys, seven is a small number. <laughs> Twelve colors <laughs> for his boys, for his friends. Body brings away. So I would, because I wanted to impress not only my ex, but my ex's family members who were his peers, uh, but also his friends. I would have brides at my mom's house, right? Because that's where I still used. To, I, I used to live. And my mom, I bet my mom was looking at me on some yes, Lomuntu. You know this chick, like. You would not help me peel potatoes, but look at how you be cooking for your friends. And I'm like, Mama, I ain't cooking for my friends. I'm cooking for my boyfriend and his friends. Forget all these girls, these females, this girl over here, this bitch. I, I don't care about my female friends. I don't even care about these guys' girlfriends. I just want the guys, the guys, the men, to say to my boyfriend after they leave, that your boss or your woman can cook for sure. This here is, is the one. I wanted his boys to leave there. Basically telling my man that you better marry this one. She kisses for keeps. Because that asparagus. Guys, the first time I ever cooked asparagus was when I was cooking it for my boyfriend's friends and my boyfriend. I literally went to Willie's, saw the vegetable and was like, I'll see what I do with it. And I, I picked it up. And I put it on a bride stand, put some seasoning on it. And here in Las Carabo, for the first time in her life, cooking asparagus. I literally, I went and I grabbed all different kinds of exotic looking veggies. Go Willie. So this guy and his friends would think that I know how to cook a plethora of veggies. That I have been raised right. And I know how to cook even vegetables whose names nobody knows because only Willie's sells them. That's what I did. I went to Willie's, spent my own money. But vegetables I've never cooked, never even seen in my life, could even spell the names and i cooked them so that his boys would be like whoa she she she, she what what did you kitchen mean this girl and i got what i wanted i got what i wanted i hosted a bride the guys did the meat right um because that's like the tradition up in this gangster joint they're the ones that a bride would be the tenement of a barbecue if you're sitting in the u.s yeah i know uh did all that but as for me, I made I made the pop. One of my girls helped and whatnot. But I was the one that did the veggie chopping and whatnot. When the guys came, I was you know in front of the stove chopping. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, ka, 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 ka. welcome. Ka, ka. Now that's what I'm used to doing. I bet my mom was just looking at this in the corner on some years, Lord. Now she doesn't even want to peel potatoes for me on Sundays, and yet look at her cooking an apple storm for her friends. And like I said, or tell my mom, and it ain't for my friends. I don't care about these females. It's about his friends and him Carabo. that's my own story to this day i'm pretty sure all of those random friends as i got my ex-boyfriend would admit even if right now they don't like me or my ministry doesn't matter i don't care bottom line is one thing they could admit is that they thought at least at the time that i was one of the best cooks that they have ever encountered they thought that i loved cooking and that i was raised except no that was not even a thing i learned just so i could impress so this chick that was cleaning even the main house of her boyfriend's grandmother's house, Kosoweto, that lived on that problem, like Ko Bekomu, with a man that's almost 40. In and of herself, she could have been like 35 or whatever. That's just what black women in Africa do. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have a car. You could still be commuting. Being rained on every single Monday on a rainy day just to get to work. They won't even care that you don't have money. So black women don't just do this and go out of their way and bend over backwards for wealthy men. I'm trying to help you understand this whole trend of high value men doing the rounds on the internet. This thing with the lighting is so irritating. Doing its rounds on the internet on some, I want the high value man that is going to wear a baby coat and that's also going to buy me gucci earrings mm. in africa even if you live in a shack at the back of your grandmama's house and so far as you are a man that has got potential to marry you are going to be cooked for and not only are you going to be cooked for and cleaned for and ironed for and had everything done for you are also going to do it for the family of this guy. This chick was basically the living domestic worker for the whole household. Like I told you, he lived in a back room at his grandmother's house. This chick used to cater to the house, the main house. And during Mesebeti, like during family events, she was the one in the kitchen chopping it up a storm and cooking. And I remember my cousin and I saying, now I'll never do that. Yes, there are other women in Africa, which I also am one of them, who'd be like, we, we got to a point where we were like, I'm not, uh, me, you will never see me chopping vegetables 
at a boyfriend's mother's house. He must marry me. Yeah, there came a time when we started to say that. But these guys would be lying if they said that they have not good, like gained the glory of the benefits of a wife and girlfriends that they weren't even all that serious with. Like black girls have been cooking at homes for boyfriends. For like, like black men are spoiled brats. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. They are spoiled, especially if they're from Africa. They are spoiled. They know that every time they get a girlfriend, this chick is going to be chopping potatoes when she's never even seen a knife in her life that chops potatoes. Just for him. Just so he can finally make a decision to marry her. So the fact that black men don't marry black women it's on them the, the the proof has always been in the pudding like do you know why my ex-boyfriend is is basically mentally insane today he is mentally insane because it was so obvious that i was wife material within the first six months of us dating that the fact that he wasted another four and a half years is now on him he lost a woman that was obviously the one and that's what black men do so when then they lose these women that are obviously the one that's when they go crazy that's when by lawyer like no man's business that's when they slap you with corobella that's when they try to do bring back lost lover that's when that's when they try to resuscitate something it's amazing and when these women don't want to come back that's when they become violent so no the problem is the men the problem is the men the men are the ones that lose good women that are happy to bend over backwards despite them not earning it, not deserving it. My ex did not have much. I used to make more money than him, yet I was his little domestic servant. Y'all need to understand, black women in Africa are like that. So these guys cannot rock up at claim and complain in all of their insensitivity that we are unsubmissive. Because we not only submit to them, but we submit to their families and we act like wives before they propose marriage. And we have seen the inside of the kitchen cupboards of their moms before they even propose marriage to us. We are so ride or die. On top of that, we don't cheat. We don't cheat on them. We're right or die in the worst way. We bend over backwards. We pull strings for them. Yes, guys, all the jobs that, uh, all the work of a woman, of a wife, to a husband black girls do that stuff from as early as 16 17 their first boyfriends they are already treating like they are husbands so black men who treat black women like we are these disrespectful no-brainers i don't know where they get that from because i observed this activity in black girls growing up and black women but i never saw it in white girls so much so did i never see it in white girls that white men white boys when black girls start to get all domesticated in their grow, when they start to cook and clean, when black girls start to act domesticated in a black, in a white guy's life, like, in other words, when a black girl is dating a white dude and she acts towards him the very same way that she acted when she was with her black man, white guys feel uncomfortable. They feel um, like, hey, you don't have to do that. Like, it's okay. Like, you know, they feel as if though this woman it just feels... Like she has to be his slave or his servant. They are like, whoa, well, it's okay. Like you don't have to clean. You don't have to wash the dishes in my apartment. You don't have to. You don't have to. And the thing is, it's not that she that like feels like she is your slave or whatever. It's just the it's inbuilt and dwelt in the black girl that the way to impress a man and so that he can finally marry her is to basically become this man's domestic servant. And so white guys react to black girlfriends that act domesticated as soon as they start dating as you don't have to do that no come on babe sit down you don't gotta wash the dishes you don't have it. And one dude i remember this one um uh youtube like video that i was watching this guy even went so far as to say that he got so uncomfortable with how domestic that this woman was that he stood up even though he was planning on leaving the dishes for a couple of hours before he washed them he stood up and washed them himself because he just felt like this woman is just gonna keep cleaning my house like she's my maid and I don't want her cleaning my house. So I'm going to clean so she can sit down. And my experiences with white girls and their boyfriends, they also don't feel the need to suddenly just start spring cleaning a guy's apartment on like the first time that they go over to visit him. They don't feel the need to get on the stove and cook. If anything, the men, if they're visiting them at their apartments, the men are the ones that are now cooking for their girlfriends when they come over. That is an experience that you rarely ever encounter as a black woman because you go to this man's house, you go to this man's apartment as a black woman, this man being a black man, and you're the one that opens the fridge and finds the tomatoes, you find the potatoes, you find the, 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 the canned peaches, you find the canned beans, and you start opening them and putting something together real quick. And they will sit and allow you to do it. 
son, it will soon allow you to do it. I remember this guy that I did. I was already a Christian. I went and I bought couscous before I went to his apartment and I was about to cook it. And he just sat there and watched me unravel couscous by his stove. And he didn't even ask, what are you doing? Because he knew what I was doing. He understood straight away what I was doing. He knew what I was about to cook a meal for him because that's just what black men get used to. And then they claim that we have left our first day stage like the fallen angels in the book of Genesis. They claim that we have abandoned our femininity when we have been right or die from the get-go. The issue in the black community is our men. Women bend over backwards. The reason why they end up so bitter and so upset is because they, they grind and they grind for men that slap them in the face. They, they, they throw it in our face. They don't care to be grateful. You know, the Bible says, don't cast your pearls to the pigs, nor give what is sacred to dogs, lest they should trample you underfoot and then turn around and tear you to pieces. Yeah. Black women end up angry, like Angela Bassett in Waiting to as Hell. I was your lover and your secretary, working every day of the week. Was at your job and no one else was there. Helping you get on your feet, 11 years of sacrifice, without the kids I have nothing to show, etc. They had that ride or die thing, and so by the time guys break up with them or they break up with guys and things have not worked out well they get so angry so mad they burn buildings they get at they hate children they kick toys all over the show they become insufferable beastly black women end up very beastly because of how much sacrifice they invest in relationships with men who at the time of breaking up act as if though you were nothing you were worthless my ex went and told the whole planet that I'm worthless and that I'm busy chasing after him when he was the one on Anzali Bizigadi Tlari with me. A woman that was ride or die bending over backwards for some lazy fool ended up being called the worst thing that ever happened to him. His mom knew that was a lie, so did his sister. Everybody in the family knew, but you know what? When it is your family member that's lying about someone, you're going to take their side. So that's why black women end up so embedded in the end. It's because we work like dogs for people who end up calling us dogs now that they're done. It's like eating a whole full meal, and instead of saying thank you, you just burp and get out of the restaurant. That's the black man for you. Next part.